Now the Blue Devils turn it around less than 48 hours later against the number 17 Vermont Catamounts following their first ever NCAA tournament. Hello everyone, welcome to Koskinen Stadium. Corey Spector with the former Duke attackman David Keefe. And Dave, let's start with Brennan O'Neill for Duke. Sophomore attack, he leaves you speechless at times. A career-high six goals against Robert Morris on Friday. Absolutely unstoppable. A generational player, sophomore, who put up 45, 54 points on 45 uh, goals last year. A lefty cannon. How do you stop him? He's a powerful dodger. He can play at any, any side, particularly on the left. And he, he's just getting started, really. The reigning ACC Freshman of the Year. Meanwhile, for Vermont, the Catamounts return all but three goals from last year's team. Their leading distributor, David Klosterman, leading goal scorer, Thomas Bacanvi, both back in the fold. Both back in. These guys are veteran players. They're used to playing with one another. They have almost muscle memory. They anticipate where they're going to be. They play a lot of low two-man games, and they are going to look to really try to disrupt the Duke defense. Should be a very entertaining matchup today, Vermont. Winners of the America East Tournament for the first time last season. Duke has been to Championship Weekend, Memorial Day Weekend, in each of the past three NCAA tournaments. And Dave, this really shapes up to be one of the best early season non-con games of the year. Yeah, it is, and it's and it's great for the you know the fact that we were able to have this night. You know, nice weather down here. The, both teams are getting together. Um, it's the first game for UVM, and they're going to be able to, I think, really put up a good showing here against the the, the Blue Devils. So. Um, up for an exciting game. And it's going to be a very interesting matchup at the face-off X. Jake Naso and Tommy Burke as Naso wins it right away. And Duke has the opening possession in the home white uniforms. Vermont in the green. For a successful clear for Duke. It was an absolute avalanche of goals for Duke early on. In the game against Robert Morris, two in the first 40 seconds. And Brennan O'Neill, 34 and white, scored 15 seconds in. Andrew McAdory moving the ball. Outstanding freshman from St. Anthony's. Number two overall recruit. He shoots it low and it goes off the knee of Ryan Cornell. The shot clock resets to 60. Out of bounds, and it's Vermont's ball as Stone Jacobs picks it up for the Catamounts. Vermont program that won the America East for the first time last year, taking down U Albany in the championship game before losing to Maryland in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and that was a really important game. I think that it showed that, Mer that uh, UVM could play with anybody. And uh, they're here, you know, they're here. To, they're here to show that they're going to be uh, firmly rooted in the top 20 and hopefully, in, you know, eventually in the top 10. Here is Thomas McConvey, 44 in green, the leading goal scorer last year with 37. Limoge perusing behind the cage, guarded closely there by Will Frizzoli. Vermont scored 188 goals last season. 185 of those goals are back this year with the Catamounts. Duke aggressively pushing out, forcing their offensive players to really think about their dodges. Twelve seconds left on the shot clock here for Vermont. Limoges behind the net. Shot clock down to five now. Limoges needs to find an option. And Vermont turns it over. Duke playing aggressive defense there. That started with Jake Caputo off on the wing. Short stick defensive midfielder. Second successful clear for Duke. Here's Brennan O'Neill. 34 in white, ACC freshman of the year last year, number one overall recruit in the class of 2020. Only four goals behind Chris Gray of UNC for the lead in the conference. Charlie O'Connor possesses for Duke. Inside the bouncing shot is stopped by Cornell. Nice ground ball by Brennan O'Neill, picking it back up, getting it right back in play. Duke has already three shots on goal. Joe Robertson, eight and white with that last attempt as Duke recovers here with 25 on the shot clock. 
Here is Grant Mitchell, the transfer out of Ohio State. Nice dodge. He shoots, and Cornell gets a stick on it. Oh, an impressive save for Ryan Cornell, keeping this game scoreless. Duke got its substitutions in. Tyler Carpenter, long stick midfielder, playing down low. 33 and white guarding the far side of the crease as David Klosterman possesses for Vermont. Second line midfield, Brock Haley is on. Clay Weiss jogging on as well, 18 and green, he has it. Chris Fife saying that in order for Vermont to take the next step this year, maybe win an NCAA tournament game, that he needs more from that second line midfield. Here they are. Yeah, it's important for Vermont to take advantage of every opportunity. They have to keep their turnovers low, and they have to take good shots uh, if they're going to hang with the, the with the Devils today. Well, Chris Feist was telling us that they want to put Duke in a lot of situations where they're going to force the defense to communicate. Use those two-man games right there with Klosterman, and Mike nice Adler save. makes a save on Klosterman. Nice save by Mark, Mike Adler. That was uh, really... Offside hip, beautiful, classic save. Duke three for three on their clears right now. Transition play was the name of the game for the Blue Devils early against Robert Morris, and Ryan Cornell is standing tall inside the crease for Vermont early on. Cornell already has three saves. Ryan Cornell already with three saves for the Catamounts. Limoges, he scores! Liam Limoges on the doorstep. And after a series of saves from Ryan Cornell, the Catamounts grab the early lead. Don't know if Duke was actually ready on that play, but they were coming out on Limoges. You can see the play develop here, and it looks like there was a little bit of slow hesitation getting there. Limoges takes a quick shot, opportunistic from the goal line extended. And, you know, just going to try to test Adler all day long. Limoges with 28 goals last season. That's the first of the year for the Catamounts and beats Kenny Brower to the cage. And Vermont, in a game after in which Duke got 10 goals in the first nine and a half minutes, the Catamounts on top. Duke settling in. You know, what makes this Duke attack just so potent? The, the amount of different players that can get it done. What, what is it about them that's so potent? You know, the thing about the Duke attack is that they're, they're versatile. Most many of these guys both play both often uh, attack and midfield in high school. And so they're going to be able to um, have a sort of a, a Swiss Army knife kind of uh, approach to how they play the game. A lot of inversions, a lot of trying, trying to uh, find the key matchups and being able to put the right players in the right position at the right time. Big deck by really, Matt Camille. Very nice move there, using the sidelines. Yeah, you could see he really, he didn't, really didn't have a chance with that pass. He was hanging up a little bit too high for too long, and uh, the Vermont player just wasn't able to really uh, keep any, make any inbound play. Duke's moving the ball around methodically. I tell you, the thing about this game is going to be if Duke is going to play the transition game that they want to play or is Vermont going to slow them down. If Vermont can make this a half-field game and keep the score, say, under 10, it's going to be a long day for Duke. Otherwise, it's going to be a whole different ball game if the uh, Duke offense gets rolling. You know, it's interesting. Chris Fife, the head coach of Vermont, told us that he thinks if Vermont keeps this close, it would be a high-scoring game, which kind of surprised you as the Kai Montgomery puts it down for Duke and we're tied at one. Yeah, I mean, you know, low-scoring game, high-scoring game, it, it always, it's going to come down to also, like, which goalie is hot. Uh, right now, Cornell's showing he's in this game. Beautiful pass off to Nakai Montgomery. This is his signature shot, really. I mean, he is a, an amazing over-the-top shooter, usually on the ground, and um, he's able to do that uh, shot every time he, he gets uh, time and space. So he's uh, he's, he's been doing that. Nakai Montgomery, he actually didn't score in the opening game against Robert Morris. Duke had 13 different goal scorers in that game. 
Brennan O'Neill with six, Dyson Williams with four, and then 11 other players had a single goal, yet none for Nakai Montgomery, who had 15 last year. Yeah, it that was that, that that's a shock, but you know, he's he's also such a great leader and role player. He doesn't need to be the guy who's scoring as long as the offense is producing. And um, and that's what you see. There's a selflessness on this team. Um, and you know, an abundance of talent. If one guy's not doing it, then the other guy's gonna step up. Duke now with three face-off wins against none for Vermont. Andrew McAdory right now with the ball. Exciting player. Um, pound for pound, one of the strongest guys on the team, actually, in the in the tradition of Jordan Wolf. Uh, people don't necessarily remember that, but Jordan was a beast in the weight room. Montgomery again. Montgomery's having a big day. That's <laughs> Signature move, signature move from from Nakai coming across. He's just doing a sweep dodge. No one picks him up, and he bangs it home. High heat. John Donowski in his 16th year at the helm for the Blue Devils. Overall, 433 wins to lead all Division I head coaches. And on the other side, Chris Feist for Vermont leading this number 17 Catamounts team in his sixth year. Very familiar with Koskinen Stadium. Former defensive coordinator with North Carolina. He won a national championship with the Tar Heels in his final year as an assistant in 2016. Nakai Montgomery with two goals thus far for the Blue Devils. Vermont struck first on a goal by Liam Limoges. And possession awarded to Vermont after the Catamounts lost the opening three face-offs. Hey, you know, what have you made of the first seven and a half minutes of this one? Yeah, you know, I think Vermont's playing at a good pace. And but the problem the problem for Vermont, it's not a problem, it's an opportunity, is you know, do you want to have your goalie be the, the, the factor that keeps you in the game? Um, so, you know, they've been able to show that they can play the game against the Devils. And, and again, I think that this is still developing. You want to have a hot goalie. Um, and so the, the key is that is, will it last for 60 minutes? Ryan Cornell with three saves thus far for the Catamounts. As Vermont looks to tie the game up at two. Klosterman using the two-man game with Limoges. Interference. And it's Duke Ball. Now, you were kind of touching on this earlier, Dave. Does Vermont want to make this a track meet, or do they want to slow it down at times? You know, if I'm Vermont and I, and I heard or saw about the Robert Morris game and understanding Coach Donowski's desire to really give the permission for the team to be a transition team this year, um, I, I would want to slow the, I would want to slow it down. Try to try to create again like a half field game, um, because they have the veterans that understand how to score with time and space. Um, and so you know that for me is something that it, I think over time is going to be something like how bad, um, how 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 can they stay with the Devils um, up and down the field, um, run run and run and gun? Are they that team? And we don't we don't know yet. This is their first meeting in what thirty five years. Um, so so there's not a lot of history here that we can bank on Vermont trying that transition game and the Catamounts start to make some substitutions as they get set in the half field here yeah I mean uh, other observations Duke has not shot the ball well they've had a number of shots right up on cage um, so in, in, to, in some regards they're making it a little bit easy for Cornell uh, but he's had some great saves so if Duke shoots a little bit better I think that they're going to be able to um, you know, obviously um, try to get in his head a little bit. And I think that's that's something that, you know, is uh, plays out. Jonas Hunter behind the net. Draws the slide. The double team converges. And great play by Matt Camille. 25 in white, the graduate student out of Garden City, New York. Yeah, so that was a great play. Let's see if we can capitalize. They, they can capitalize this on the... On the, on the, on the mid, in the middle of the field. Then Duke turns it over, and Griffin Fennick has it for the Catamounts. And Chris Fives, the head coach for Vermont, utilizes a timeout. Well, Duke turns it over, but on that prior possession, this double team by the Blue Devils 
pretty stingy. Yeah, I mean, the key thing here is that the, 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 the player turned his head. Once he turned his head, the two guys are leaving. Um, they're leaving fast. They have the permission to do that. Um, and they're going to, you know, try to get it quickly up at transition as they did. They just made a couple errant passes um, and turned the ball over in the middle third. There is John Donowski, the head coach of Duke. So impressed with what Chris Fives brought this program to the Catamounts in his sixth year. He's so complimentary, even after the game on Friday against Robert Morris, saying, look, we've got to turn our attention quickly. And it was interesting speaking to Donowski this week, Dave. You know, he said we don't get the opportunity to put much effort into Vermont throughout the week because we got to worry about game one against Robert Morris on Friday. Yeah, it's, you know, early season. It's interesting. I, I mean, to to uh, to look at some of the teams that come in here many times, it, it's their it's their first game. Duke might have four games under their under their schedule. And those first four games are the other opponents first game of the season in each case. So no one's really getting a tremendous amount of time to prepare. Um, and, you know, it's it's right now it's a non-conference, so you are also don't have the same familiarity. You don't have the same understanding of the matchups that they would if they were playing a Notre Dame or a Carolina or a Syracuse. So it's, um, it, is, it is a challenge. They're trying to learn a little bit about each other on the fly. It's a Duke team last year that lost Michael Sowers in his one year with Duke. 37 goals, 44 assists after transferring in from Princeton. So they got to figure that side of it. On the attack out, they did so with 21 goals on Friday. And then on the defensive side with JT Giles Harris also leaving, becoming a professional with the Chrome in the PLL. Yeah, you know, the absence of Sowers was a big question mark. And then, you know, at that point, I think the, the question mark was largely answered the other night with Will, with with Robert Morris and, and, and really seeing how a Brandon O'Neill offense is going to work. And the coach is given full permission and licensed for Brandon to take the ball and uh, and be be a playmaker, be a creator, and then that's and that's that's a that's a sh- you know a sign of trust that um, that you really want to want to make sure that you uh, develop with the with with your uh, offensive players. So um, it's going to be exciting. I think Brennan's just starting, I'll, but I tell you, Vermont right now is is it has kept it so that Brennan hasn't really touched the ball. Michael McCormack on the outside, graduate transfer from Middlebury College, 97 in green in his second year with Vermont. That guy's got an absolute tank of a shot. Klosterman loses the ball behind the cage, and Kenny Brower picks it up, the junior captain for the Blue Devils. And we mentioned the loss of JT Giles Harris. It really puts a guy like Kenny Brower in a position to step up as the anchor of the Blue Devils defense. Yeah, Kenny Brower, you know, he's an incredible anchor in that, re- in that regard. He put on a show the other day in the middle third of the field showing that he can bring the ball all the way up. Um, he's a leader down low, but, you know, any of these guys can come up the field and, uh, and become an offensive threat as well. So, you know, JT Giles Harris was, was, was uh, known for that. Vermont doing a good job hanging in there with these guys in the middle third. Jacobs to the outside, Klosterman. Duke settles back defensively. The bouncing shot from the edge of the crease is stopped by Mike Adler. Uh, Duke right now, I'm looking to clear the ball, get it over and get it into Brandon O'Neill's hands just so he doesn't go cold right now and uh, get, really get a, a, a really nice thought-out shot on a goal. It seemed like a long time since Duke has had a, a clean offensive possession, hasn't it? Yeah, and this was this is something that is, you know, it works to the benefit of, uh, of Vermont. The longer that they can keep the ball on their offensive end, that's like playing defense against uh, against our offensive unit. They can go cold. And the shot is stopped inside off the deflection. That was Cam Bador, the captain, who could not release the shot. Vermont in transition. Lamoge, Cornell out of the crease. And then the shot is whistled home by David Klosterman. Incredible play. Well, Dave, they said Ryan Cornell was involved in the clearing game. I didn't know to this capacity. Yeah, well, you know, they, they, we talked to the, their coaches, and they said he's one of the best, if not the best, athlete on the team. If you watch here, he brings, initiates the play, follows the play, assists, and, you know, it's just a matter of a classic four-on-three break that turns down into a two-on-one and ultimately just a great shot. So um, that's a play you rarely see a goalie uh, making that kind of transition. Wow. Ryan Cornell. Give that man an assist. And we are tied up at two. Oh 
Duke has now won four out of the five face-offs. Cole Krause coming in as a long pole to help out. And see if Duke tries to settle it down. You see Brennan O'Neill putting his hand down, trying to get his guys to get into the right position. Yep, and that's, you know, the coach has asked him to be, to be take on that leadership role as a sophomore, and he can do it. So right now it's, you know, what kind of quality shots do we get, and if we have easy shots, do we put them in? Andrew McAdory beats his defender, bounces it wide to the left side of Cornell, and Duke backs it up. Closest player to the ball when it goes out of bounds off a shot is awarded possession. Feed to the front behind the back. It was deflected. That shot coming from the talented freshman McAdory. And Ryan Cornell opts this time to uh, stay in the crease and pass it back out in the clearing game. It was a quality quality play. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking a behind the back shot. You just got to make sure that it's it's well placed and uh, it is, it gives you the the ability to uh, to actually deceive the goalie. In this case, it hit the goalie. There is Mike Adler. The goalie for Duke leads all active Division I goalies and saves entering today with over 600. Transfer out of St. Joseph's. Climb Duke right now. There's a minute left. You're looking to, again, get that quality shot. Work it around. Be methodical. It, it definitely, uh, they're working, uh, you know, in more of a settled offense today versus what we saw with Robert Morris the other night which was all transition. When would you start to initiate this offense here since you want that final possession? Um, I usually pr uh, around 25 seconds, even though a lot of a lot of teams wait down to, you know, 15, but 25 seconds because you just you don't want to get in trouble with, with uh, 10, you know, 12 seconds left. So you can wait too long. O'Neal can't find a teammate. They deem it a pass. It's Vermont ball anyway with under 20 seconds to go. So Duke's offense a little bit rattled to start in the opening 15 as opposed to what we saw against Robert Morris. Yeah, this will be a key, key, key right here to see if they can get a stop if they have As Jacobs shot on puts goal. it on Adler. A couple of seconds remaining here for the Catamounts. Klosterman in front looking for Nick Alvidi. And that'll do it for the opening quarter here from Koskinen Stadium. Tie game at two. Vermont hanging tough with the Duke Blue Devils. Second quarter coming up next. So if Geico's 85, that makes you... Are you asking if I'm 85 years old? Sea turtles live to be 150, so... <laughs> no, I, I, I was not. Geico, saving people money for 85 years. Deadlocked at two as we start the second quarter from Koskinen Stadium. Number three, Duke. Number 17, Vermont. Each with two goals in the opening 15 minutes. Corey Spector here with the former Duke attackman, David Keefe. And, and Dave, what has impressed you about Vermont's composure thus far in this one? I think from a game plan perspective, they're doing exactly what they want. You know, if, if, if Coach had you know, looked at this and said we'd be 2-2 at the end of the first quarter, um, that's really what you want. That means that they've controlled a lot of time of possession of the clock and uh, had a lot of, a lot of good uh, saves coming up from their goalie, which, you know, makes the, makes the Duke offense play a little bit tight. Uh, they're thinking maybe a little bit too much about every shot. It was uh, it was certainly a tumultuous path for Vermont to get down to North Carolina. The initial plan for the Catamounts was to be in Durham by Friday. And instead, they got to Durham late Saturday night. A couple of flights changed. They were supposed to go to Man, uh, go to New Hampshire, rather, in Manchester. And, uh, and leave Friday morning. That didn't happen. Flight got canceled. They had to bus back to Vermont. Then they bus to Boston. And long story short, they got here late last night, got a practice in, 
ended that practice around 9 o'clock and so far looks pretty sharp in the opening minutes against the Blue Devils. Vermont's being very patient, looking for the right matchup. Got the short stick. Quick shot, try to see if Adler's awake. Backed up by Vermont. Yeah, it's an interesting kind of chess match between these two teams, right? Where does Vermont find the short stick? Is it Griffin Fennick that gets the short stick matchup? Is it someone else for the Catamounts that needs to step up? Yeah. Well, Duke has a plethora of long stick midfielders. Uh, they're, they're playing, playing you know, really almost all over the field. So you just saw right there, I think Owen Caputo. Yeah, Owen Caputo's matched up. Just a nice inside move. Brings it back cross side. Picks the, picks the shot. Off the goalie's shoulder. Griffin Fennick, as we mentioned, draws the short stick and capitalizes to give Vermont the 3-2 lead. And when we spoke to Chris Fives, he said, yeah, we need more from our second line middies, but Griffin Fennick is a guy who's going to get the short stick. He had just 10 goals and five assists last season, but if we want to be that premier team in the national landscape, Griffin Fennick needs to call his own number maybe a little bit more often. Violation on Duke. Face-off violation. Cat's ball. Second line midi. Brock Haley's out there. Asserts himself to the net. And he finishes, but this is going to be a crease violation against the Catamounts as Haley goes barreling in to Mike Adler. So you can finish inside the crease, just not inside the goal mouth. But clearly, Haley was in that six feet of diameter. Yeah, you know, he's got the same, almost the exact same move. Problem is, his body and his whole momentum brought him right into the goal. And um, that's going to be taken back. And so not only does the goal get wiped off the board because of how vicious the collision was, this could result and a penalty on Vermont as the flag did come out. It's one of the interesting things in lacrosse. The officials can decide how much time they want to give a play like that against Vermont, Brock Haley, as they determine the severity of the contact. Chris Fife's the Vermont head coach, is coming out wanting an explanation. Let's listen in here. White, number one, push, 30 second foul. Green, 11, a sports line conduct, one minute full time. Okay, so while the penalties are being assessed, they are trying to fix the net to our left. Fouls on both teams as they try to rearrange the goal to the left. So Garrett Ledman gets the initial push for Duke, and then Brock Haley gets a minute on the Vermont side. Seconds. What'd you think there, Dave? Yeah, it was a clear, clear cross check from the from behind. I didn't see Letman involved in it at all. Hmm. So it looked like it was on. Does that be? That was Wade. Yeah, so they're going to get him for a cross check. He's playing around, and then the Vermont player, I believe, would be penalized for the charge into the goal, which is, I think, an interference call. So it looks like the goal will count unless... No, the goal was wiped off for sure. Goal's wiped off, not on the scoreboard. Yes, goal was wiped off, yeah. So each team has a player on the sideline right now. Duke tries to clear, 
After the long stoppage with Jack Frizzoli, Vermont nearly forces the turnover. Ball is still up for grabs as Kenny Brower just kicks it ahead and Vermont wins it. Tim Manning picks it up for the Catamounts. And a flag is down on the near side of the field all the way to the left. Vermont's just playing very cagey ball right now. Aggressive, pushing Duke, making Duke drop the ball, turnovers, you name it. Nice, mid, nice play in the middle third of the field. It's exactly what their game plan said they wanted to do. So now that each player has, or each team has a player on the sideline, it's five on five. Now Duke returns a player. That is Tyler Carpenter. And so Vermont goes five on six with the flag down. They'll probably want to waste away this time so they can get the full man up advantage after the ball goes out of bounds or the next whistle. Limoges tiptoes his way towards the crease, shoots it wide of Adler, and the Duke goalie picks it up, and Vermont goes to the man up. So Dyson Williams goes off, and Vermont to the man up. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really, a, right now, the, the, the whole story of this game is time of time of possession vermont has had the ball most of this game in their offensive end so duke has the edge in total shots but it does feel like the catamounts have possessed the ball more in the first 17 and a half minutes of this game catamounts last season 41 percent with the extra man that was top 17 in the country Limoges. Haley shoots, and Adler gets a foot on it, backed up by Klosterman for Vermont. Out, out, out. Michael McCormack, 97 in green. He wants to shut up for the big shot on the outside. As the pass goes awry, out of bounds, and it's Duke's ball as the Blue Devils kill it off. Blue Devils need to be patient here. They're man down. They got to get the ball in and then play a little bit of keep away. Kai Montgomery, who gives it back to Aiden Denenza, 88 and white, a sophomore. Top 26 recruit in the class of 2020. Duke very high on Denenza. It was really improved upon his left hand, according to head coach John Donowski. Yeah, he's a player who is, uh, you know, he just glides went through his dodges. And the remarkable thing about him is he's always got his head up. So he's such a great passer off his dodge. And Vermont ball. Vermont ball. McAdory coughed it up. See if the Catamounts can capitalize in transition. They have trouble picking it up. That's Colin Sharkey, 22 and green on the far side. Limoges being hounded by Frizzoli. Dukes had to change things up defensively from last year to this. John Donowski saying we need our guys to mature back there. Wilson Stevenson becoming a senior. Kenny Brower becoming a junior. And Will Frizzoli stepping into more of the limelight this year for the Blue Devils. Jonas Hunter, he's out of Portland, Oregon, one of 27 players to coming hard on the double play. Cole Kraus pushing, pushing the perimeter out a little bit, trying to make them make longer passes, more recovery time. Single digits left on the shot clock. And if Duke grabs it, they'll hold on to possession they do before the shot clock expires. Duke in transition now. Kraus to the opposite side. Robertson shoots and stopped by Cornell. Ryan Cornell has come up with timely saves. That is his fifth of the day. 
Duke might have been advised not to take that shot. You know, when you bring it, when you have such a great defensive stop like that, your defense has been playing for a long time. They're gassed. I know that it's the temptation to go to the goal right away is that transition team, but on that play, might have wanted to get a good possession, get a goal, tie it up. Klosterman gets topside, and Adler reaches above the crossbar to make the stop. Seems like the, the momentum is shifting a little bit with respect to the Duke defense, which is uh, something that they have been uh, really playing most most of the game. The ball's been down there. So, again, those guys have to make sure that they're not too gassed as we go into the second quarter and into, into the second half. So what needs to change about the Duke attack right now? you got a hot goalie like Ryan Cornell. How do you beat this guy? Honestly, you don't think about it, and you start playing loose. You know, they know these, the, this team knows how to play. So the mistakes they're making are mistakes that are um, usually ones you don't they're, – they're sort of atypical. Um, so it's like a push with possession. No, just push from behind. Sean Lully to re-trigger the transfer out of Penn. They're very excited about Lully and his capability to play behind the cage and serve as a, uh, a beneficiary of some of the other talented players on this Blue Devils roster. Yeah, I mean, it's important to know that, you know, the, def the, 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 the defense on Vermont, you know, they're looking at it and they're, we can play with these guys. So how do you know that? See how far out they're pushing the, pushing the offensive players. They're not packing it in, okay? And... There's Cornell again with a great save. That time stopping Brennan O'Neill, the prize sophomore for the Blue Devils. As Devin O'Leary, the transfer out of Stony Brook, pushes ahead for the Catamounts. In-conference transfer for head coach Chris Fife. They love that O'Leary can help out on the face-offs as well when they double pull. And now the Catamounts try to extend their lead to two. They have held Duke, a team that scored 10 goals in the first nine and a half minutes against Robert Morris on Friday to just two. McCormick's looking to get his hands free. Goes to the right hand and bounces it through Adler. Well, he has the lethal left hand, opts to go right, and Vermont doubling up Duke. Yeah, you're seeing Vermont execute, and you know the Duke Blue Devils on the other side are really sort of scratching their, scratching their head looking for a, a solution. Michael McCormack with 33 last season gets on the board and is really puzzling the Blue Devils right now here from Koskinen Stadium. Eight shots on goal for Duke thus far. Only two have found the back of the net. Thanks in large part to this man, Ryan Cornell, in cage for Vermont. Yeah, there's nothing worse than a hot goalie for the Duke, Duke offense. I mean, he's able to really get in front of almost any kind of shot here, running up the field, being the initiator on offense. He's called the, you know, the goalies are the first offensive player, getting the feedback, dumping it out for an assist. That's kind of transition you can't ever really get out of a goalie. So, um, you know, there's... If you look at complete up the up and down the field play, he's doing it all right now. Doesn't that make you shake as a coach, right? To see your goalie going up that far? Yeah, well, you know, goalies are a hot commodity. You, you don't want to see anything happen to your goalie, but I can tell you right now, the Duke uh, the Duke offense has really got to be thinking about their shots. You notice most of those shots in that in that in that reel right there are from pretty far out, which means that defense is really pushing them out to the perimeter. Stalemate at the face-off X as we restart play here in the second quarter. It flings itself all the way into the Vermont offensive portion of the field. And Michael McCormack picks it up for the Catamounts. When COVID started to shut down the world back in 2020, McCormack, who was playing at Middlebury College, 45 minutes south of Burlington in Vermont, uh, both parties had mutual interest. And so McCormack, who set all of these records in Massachusetts for his high school with a ho over 190 points as a senior at Greylock High School, Vermont said, yeah, come on in. And they have been really excited about what McCormack has provided this offense. So if you're watching these plays, they're working the ball down every time on the short stick defensive midfielders like right now. And they're, they're trying to test a uh, goal line extended to see if they can get that dodge, see if they can get that quick shot, or see if they can find someone open on the cage. Beautiful save by Adler. 
halting McConvey that time as Duke tries to clear. They've had some struggles in this category. Already with two turnovers in the clear game, but Garrett Ledman peels away with it for the Blue Devils. Garrett Ledman. Now let's see if they're going to push or are they going to pause. Are they going to take a possession? They're going to push. Sean Lully matched up with Will Jones behind the net as the Blue Devils start to make some substitutions. Camba Dorr is on, five and white with the ball, along with Dyson Williams, 51. Adore coming off the season-ending ACL injury. Second time in his career that he's overcome that. Adore now a graduate Hi. school. Williams approaches, bounces it low, and Cornell stops another one. And Nick Alvidi clears for Vermont. Chris Fifes believes that Alvidi is the best long stick midi in the entire America East. Dyson Williams on that last shot tried to get in off the goal line, extended, bring it back. Lefty shot. He's a natural lefty. Beautiful save by Cornell. Can't say it enough. This Vermont team just seems so poised. So many travel difficulties in the past couple of days. You open the season with the number three team in the country. And they have the two goal lead right now. Haley against Wade. McCormack using that frame. He shoots. And Adler comes up with it for the Blue Devils. You know, if there's one word I could say right now to describe Vermont is they're, they're, they're playing they're playing with a degree of swagger. You know, they're they're making the plays where they need to make them. So that was af after the fact, push from behind. And Chris Fife's irate on the Vermont sideline. So four minutes to go, opening half. This could be a pivotal juncture in this game. Does Vermont extend the lead, or does Duke creep right back into it? What stood out to you thus far about this Catamounts D, aside from Cornell's play? I, their athleticism. I mean, you know, it, it, this is something that, you know, you come to a game like today, if you don't have athletes, you're not going to be able to keep up with these guys. So um, if you look at them, the Duke guys, they're right on their hands, right? They're not able to make the easy pass. And that's something that is a product of athleticism and hustle. Um, Cornell again. So are, are these shots the best shots that the, the, Duke, that the Devils could be taking? Probably not. But the defense is right up on them the whole time. Sean Lully couldn't convert that time for the Blue Devils. And Vermont moves ahead with an opportunity to get a three-goal cushion. And the Catamounts elect to take their final timeout of the first half. So just over three minutes to go in the second quarter. And Dave, you're on the Blue Devils sideline right now. John Donowski, defensive coordinator Ron Caputo. What is the message to this defense right now as Vermont has an offensive opportunity? I think the, the, the message is from the defensive standpoint is communicate. Um, you know, a lot of those breakdowns that you saw at the goal line extended have been because there wasn't an effective slide package coming in. So um, they've got to communicate. Adler's been keeping them in the game, to be honest with you. And um, the short stick defensive midfielders are just getting uh, they, they're just a step slow. So, you know, I think communicate and, on, you know, on the offense, they have to really think about the opportunities and the pace of the game that they want. You know, th if this is going to be a low scoring game and it's going to be a 10-9 game, then every possession is going to count. You can't have any turnovers. Catamounts have not seemed phased whatsoever. This is a team that last year entered the Carrier Dome against Syracuse, one of the top teams in the country early last year. And Vermont only lost that game by four. They hung around the entire game. Tommy Burke, the face-off man, was fantastic. Uh, in the end, Syracuse's goalie, Drake Porter, made 21 saves, which was a career high at the time. And uh, Mike Adler is doing some similar things right now for Duke, like you said, Dave, to keep this Blue Devils team afloat. Yeah, I mean, if you if you get into the far reaches of a game and you're close with a team that you didn't think you were going to beat, everyone starts to believe. It gets infectious on the sidelines. 
And it's just one of those things where I think that right now, that level of swagger that I was talking about really comes from that. These guys, these guys in green are hopping up and down on the sidelines because they're in sunny Durham and they think they can win. Vermont with four different goal scorers this game, Klosterman, Limoges, McCormack, and Fennec. All members of the front six for Vermont that started last year, they're all back. And that chemistry has paid off thus far for the Catamounts. Here is Griffin Fennec. Matched up with Jack Frizzoli, the transfer out of Harvard, the older brother of Will Frizzoli. So the two Frizzoli brothers, 7-17 seven and 17 in white. It's a two-man game. They're looking for a switch. Stevenson going to get it back up top. And now they're going goal line extended inside. Twenty seconds to shoot. McConvey gets the left hand nice free, save. and Mike Adler makes a stop and then barrels into his own cage off the rebound by Limoges. Beautiful save by Adler. Beautiful save. Um, what wide open opportunity? Just a great, great play by by Adler. The rebound unfortunately goes in front of him. He can't get it. Nice behind-the-back effort by Vermont. Hunter to McConvey at goal line extended. Warded off there by Kenny Brower. Shot clock did reset, so it's at 45 right now. Yeah, I'm just struck by the composure of their offense. You know, they're not making a lot of mistakes. They're moving the ball. They're dodging and then replacing. And they're really reacting to the pressure that Duke's trying to put on them. Fennec, 20 seconds now remaining on the shot clock. David Klosterman, 10 in green, the leading assister last year with 22. Klosterman this time shoots, and Mike Adler catches it in the big spoon. Adler, keeping these guys in the game right now. Again, early second half, but very important save right there. About a five-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. So for the Blue Devils, they're trying to hold on for the final shot here, yes? Yeah, I think so. But, you know, if you can get some really quick offense right here um, and then get another face-off and win by Jake Naso and bring it down, you might be able to do some more damage than you think. So it depends. A little double dip. Yep. I mean, there's a lot. that's a lot of time. Kai Montgomery, 15 in white. He has both goals for Duke after not scoring in the opener. Graduate student with plenty of experience. He played football this fall, and John Donowski said, look, we don't need a guy like Nikai Montgomery to be here in the fall because he knows all the terminology. We've got to work on the freshmen, the sophomores, and the juniors. 20 seconds remaining in half. McAdory. Denenza. 12 seconds remaining. Robertson behind the cage. Looks for Lully. That's off the mark. Frizzoli taps it forward. Five seconds remaining in the half. And a shot clock violation against the Blue Devils. So Vermont with one last gasp and a fifth goal here in the first half. Cornell way down the field. And it's over the outstretched arm of Michael McCormack. And that's how the first half ends. Duke with 21 goals on Friday, just two in the opening half. And Vermont doubling up the Blue Devils 4-2 at half. Machines are out of control. Whatever comes, I will be ready. 
It is halftime from Koskinen Stadium between number three shell top. He's able to be a leader in a Virginia uniform, the most outstanding player in the NCAA tournament last year. Yeah, you know, Schellenberger, really, he can do anything. He feeds from up top. He's able to be a, a leader on the defense, tons of composure as a freshman. It's something that, you know, almost would be unexpected for that role. But he can also take over in big games, as we saw last year in the NCAA Finals. And he was really a, a, a change agent for the team. That'll... And then Chris Gray for North Carolina. School record last year with the Tar Heels, 91 points after coming over from BU. Yeah, Chris Gray is a guy who really transformed the entire uh, Carolina offensive operation. He can shoot from anywhere. He can shoot in close. He can actually release the ball quicker than almost anyone in college lacrosse. Great deceptive dodger and, and really a, a guy who's in incredible shape on, you know, on the field. Gray will have to make up for some of the losses in the midfield for North Carolina. Then Pat Cavanaugh, Notre Dame known for its defense, but Cavanaugh on the offensive end, special as a distributor and a scorer as well. He's just, he's an amazing distributor. He comes from a long line of great lacrosse players he's from his, in his family from Long Island, and he's, he's able to really penetrate almost any kind of defense with deception. He's, a, he's absolutely slippery, and he knows how to find the big game, the big uh, points in the, at the right time. And then Brennan O'Neill, the reigning freshman of the year in the ACC. We see a ton of him throughout the year. 45 goals and only getting better in his sophomore campaign. Yeah, like we said before, Brennan O'Neill is a generational player. He's a lefty. He has an amazing size, power, and speed. And there's really no way to defend him without putting two guys on him. So that leaves incredible mismatches with the rest of the offense. And then when this attack gets going, sometimes Nakai Montgomery, the midfield for Duke, it kind of gets overshadowed. But Montgomery, preseason All-ACC selection, another great guy in there for Duke. The, Nakai Montgomery is the leader of the Duke team, and he really is someone who has been through almost every kind of situation at Duke. He knows how to move the ball. He knows he's become one of the best feeders in, the, in NCAA history. And he's really one of these guys you're going to look to to carry them to the championship. All five teams in the ACC within the top 12 should be an exciting year in the conference. More from Koskinen Stadium after this. Players looking for the first repeat since Princeton in the late 90s. A new shot clock situation. It is reset to 60 for the orange minus Chris. Really cross against number. Just think from a recruit, one kid who's not going to. Second half offensive. Former Duke attack. He's taking uh, shots from way out. He's getting on, uh, seeing the ball. He's uh, in the right position at the right time, but also down close, in low, and, you know, making great transition. You can't make this kind of stuff up and watch. He, he stays in the play as a trailer. He knows what to do. Four on three, fast break, textbook. Boom, he's acting like an attackman. Each goalie with eight saves thus far, and Mike Adler is really keeping Duke in this game. Yeah, I mean, Adler is Adler is a very athletic goalie, and he, he can see the ball very well on most occasions, and he's he's able to, you know, really understand the direction of the ball and get in front of it. Um, you know, the, a lot of his shots right here, it really was what's keeping him in the game. So, you know, I think that I, I, uh, the Vermont team has out, outshot the Devils. 20 to 17. You would have never thought that at halftime. And the Catamounts, although the offense hasn't been firepowered, it's been four different goal scorers with Klosterman, Limoges, McCormack, and Fennec. So back to the face-off X we go to start the second half. It has been an even at the face-off X with four apiece between Vermont and Duke. And if you're on the Blue Devils side, you're John Donowski, Dave. What's the message to this team? How do you improve on that on the offensive side? I mean, on the offense, they they're they're not taking high percentage shots, and they're not they're not being patient enough to wait for those high percentage shots. Um, they need to space out. They need to play loose, and they need to trust each other, right? So there's there's a lot that goes into that. Tommy Burke wins the initial faceoff cleanly. They try to go quickly with Bamoge, who is just surrounded by three Duke defenders, and now the Catamounts settle it down. It's a Vermont program that has faced Duke three times as a Division I program and has lost all three times. The guy to my right was on the field for one of them. Yeah, 35 years ago, roughly, uh, played played against the Catamounts, a really great team back then in the ECAC, uh, led by guys like Scott Gabrielson, who went on to become a 
national champion at the Philadelphia Wings. Uh, guys like uh, Craig Migat, who was known as Mayhem, and mm. really could create a lot of havoc behind the goal. Steve Wilson and Russell Spencer anchoring the defense. Well, uh, that Catamounts team, uh, a lot different than the one we're seeing today. Your Duke team won by 16 goals that day. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it, it was like I said, it was it was a high scoring game and a really great capable team of Vermont. It was back then. And, the, you know, they built the, the tradition of this program right here. Duke forces the turnover on the opening possession for the Catamounts, but Jake Caputo loses it. And here comes Jackson Canfield coming off a season ending injury a year ago. Partially torn ACL. Canfield thought that he'd get back in the lineup late in the year, but decided when the knee was feeling a little loose, he said, you know what, I'm going to shut it down, not waste a year of eligibility. And Vermont is very excited to have 27 in green back on the field. Yeah, just a, another, you know, uh, so, uh, unforced error by Duke. And, you know, really got to reduce those if they're really going to put a cap on this uh, strong UVM scoring scoring drives. McConvey whistles it high and wide, backed up, though, by Vermont, as Jonas Hunter picks it up behind the cage. Seen a lot more of Matt Camille in the second game for the Blue Devils. He guards Hunter as they get it back out to McConvey. Exchanges hands, flying through the air, and shoots it wide, backed up by the Blue Devils. Nice job by Kenny Brower. Nice job by the Blue Devils. They need to get this ball cleared over the restraining line and out very quickly. Um, Clearing was not a problem the other day, and today the Catamounts are really getting right up in their in their uh, in their uh, faces early on. They're pushing them into a shorter shorter positions on the field. Eight giveaways already for Duke. As Vermont is looking for a hold, they don't get it, and the Kai Montgomery peels away with it for the Blue Devils. Unsettled situation with Robertson to the doorstep, and Dyson Williams punches it home. Yeah, just a great unsettled play. Uh, you know, this is going to happen when you when you try to jam the Duke players into a small space. There's going to be uncertainty, 50-50 ground balls. They picked that up, went right to the goal. Dyson Williams puts it home. Yeah, Chris Fife and the Vermont coaching staff thought that Stone Jacobs was being held by Montgomery. They don't get the call. They leave Williams wide open in front, and the Blue Devils are within one. So now the Catamounts facing some adversity, right? You have the great first half, can't score on the first couple of possessions, and Duke makes this a one-goal game. Cole Kraus flips it forward. And the Catamounts have the ball. They lose it, though. That was Colin Sharkey. And Sticks, bodies flying all over the place. And finally, Garrett Ledman has complete control for the Blue Devils with a chance to tie the game. Duke's happy about those last two plays. They're now trying to get some time time possession on the clock. Get in a rhythm. You know, that's one of the things that, that I think that Danowski's probably was talking to them about in the, in the locker room. Let's get in our rhythm. Let's do our thing. Fundamentals. McAdory dodges down the alley. Slide comes from Sharkey. A lot of exterior play right now for the Blue Devils. O'Neill against Canfield. What a welcome back for Jackson Canfield as O'Neill puts it home. Brandon O'Neill pumps up the Duke sideline, and we are knotted up at four. Yeah. Brandon O'Neill, one-on-one -on -one individual effort, hard, hard to stop with one person. Denenza brings it down, moves it around. Brandon O'Neill says, "I'll decide." One-on-one -on -one matchup, double-team slide comes across, does a question mark dodge, question mark shot, puts it right in, boom. Dave, wasn't it funny when we spoke to head coach John Donowski this week? He said, you know, one of the things that we were trying to improve upon this offseason, he put his hand next to his mouth and he said, I'm trying to get the ball more to Brennan O'Neill. I think that's a smart move. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, 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 they, they have an embarrassment of riches on offense. They really do. But Brennan O'Neill is the guy that, you know, this year as a sophomore, 
they their their mantra is you know let Brennan be Brennan and he's and he and you know that's that's what he did in more the uh, Robert Morris game and to a degree he's starting to right now but you know the key thing is you put two guys on Brennan O'Neill you still got to cover Dyson you got to cover uh, Montgomery you've got to cover uh, McAdory so it's uh, you know, it's 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 not an enviable position enviable position for any uh, for any defense. No doubt about it. So Brennan O'Neill, after the six goals on Friday, gets his first today. Now can Vermont get that coveted response as McConvey can't catch the pass? Lewandowski looking for it for the catabounce. It's taken by Duke. Blue Devils in transition. Robertson Williams. Yes! And the Blue Devils with a 3-0 run to start the third quarter. They have the lead against the Catabouts. Yeah, great, great, great ground ball effort. Picking it up in transition. Eyes open, head up, bringing it down. Cross cage pass. Exactly what you want. One-on-one -on -one with the goalie. Hard to stop for Cornell. Well, you illuminated this early. The transition game for Duke in the win over Robert Morris was so spectacular. We really had not seen it in the first half today. We're seeing it in half number two. Yeah, and, you know, trans transition is really about, you know, anticipating where you need to be um, for in, in those unsettled situations and, you know, and getting the, the right guys to create that imbalance. And that's the thing. You know, so it's back to the Syracuse days in the 90s, you know, those teams were run and gun, and they would – take a tremendous amount of shots in a game not all of them will go in but they never let you rest and that's that's the key so if you're going to decide to play that then you're going to have to make sure that you're doing things like just like that no turnovers and then the duke team is going to come in and potentially you know get the ball going in the other direction so Klosterman shooting wide but nobody back there for vermont and the blue devils have it Ledman falls down around two Catamounts defenders, but Ledman regathers. Ledman, all of six foot four, 230, I believe. You know, that's a, not an easy guy to take down. So, you know, these are these are some big bodies that are flow, that are that are flowing around the in transition as we we're talking about. Second line midfield out there with Charlie O'Connell, Garrett Ledman, and the transfer Grant Mitchell from Ohio State. Not taking O'Neill off the field. Takes on Canfield. You see the Duke offense getting in a little bit of a rhythm right now, right? They're trying to work for that high percentage shot. It doesn't mean one-on-one uh, -on -one with the goalie necessarily. Beautiful defensive check. And here comes Nick Alvidi, the long stick midi for Vermont. Catamounts working quickly. Limoges goes low. Adler stops it. And flagged down by Brower, although Limoges almost caused the turnover. Adler spry out of the crease, and it's Duke Ball. Back in transition. This is getting exciting. Mitchell. Oh, he is devoured inside. Robertson scores. Yeah, that was just a, a, it was a clean hit, but it was one of those where the entire momentum of his body was going towards the goal. He was not. He did, had no, no ability to see. Beautiful check there. That's called a windmill, as you see the <laughs> stick go up in the, and then you know bringing it down here. Duke did, did a really nice job sloughing in, making sure that they limit the shot. Great save, gave uh, Adler time and space. Stevenson comes up with it, then Adler clears the ball. This is transition in action right there. That's a 40 right there. It was a 35, 40 yard pass coming down, cross cage. One more look, one on one with the goalie. Off the faceoff, Vermont tries to go quickly. Burke in front. McCormack is halted by Adler. Adler's coming up big. He's feeling it right now. He's feeling it. And the Duke, the Duke team is responding. And this is what we were talking about before. They're sensing it. Their, their sense of swagger and organization is back. And they're moving the ball in a methodical way. Brennan O'Neill looking for that, again, high percentage opportunity. Something was said in that locker room by Coach Donowski. You can believe me. <laughs> yeah, they look fired up to start the second Something half. Something changed, and he's known as the master of the second half. He really is. Um, so, and that goes back to NCAA championship games or early, early season non-conference games. He knows how to make adjustments. Nice 
nice save by Cornell. He's all over that one. I think it was a little bit broadcast by Brennan. When you say broadcast, you mean just they could see it pretty easily coming? Yeah, he dropped his stick low, and, and they really, and he was he was leaning on his back foot. So you know, at that point, you know, you don't know exactly how much he's going to be able to get on it. You know, Brennan O'Neill likes to be moving forward into the into his shot. Griffin Fennick now slowing it down for Vermont. Catamounts with four goals in the opening half. They've yet to score in the second. They go to their leading goal scorer, McConvey. The shot goes wide on the outside by Fennick. So the difference right now, as you see, is Duke's forcing them to take shots farther out, right? And it's giving a little bit more time and space in the ball for Adler to see um, and for slides to come, which is exactly what you just saw right there. Kenny Brower bruising down the attackers, but McCormack gets it back. Spaced out. Fennick against Camille. The exchange for Caputo. With 10 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Hunter takes the screen. Fennick goes down. A legal screen against Vermont. And it's Duke Ball. Very similar to basketball. You can't be moving those feet. And it results in Duke possession. And we talk about the Canadian influence for the Catamount, six players from Canada, they love to use that two-man game, those Canadians. They do, and, and you know, the, 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 the way they play also is they play they play cross-handed, so they don't even have to switch hands when they're, when they're playing and when they're moving the ball. And that, that, that right there allows them to hide their, hide this, hide their stick. Um, and so it's very hard to actually play and know where the ball is many times when you're playing against a Canadian player. Duke saw 20 plus Canadians on the uh, Robert Morris roster on Friday. Another six here for Vermont. And Chris Fife's told us he hasn't been able to go to Canada in the past couple of years due to the travel restrictions, but he usually goes around twice a year. What, what you just saw there was a, 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 a turnover by Vermont and, a, and then another turnover um, regaining possession by, by, by Duke. Great goal by Montgomery. Third of the day for Nakai Montgomery. And the Blue Devils have stormed out to start the second half and lead seven to four. Montgomery unabated to the cage. And Duke leads by three. It was a sluggish start for Duke in the opening 30 minutes of this game, but a 5-0 run for the Blue Devils to start the third quarter and a three-goal lead for Duke. Yeah, Duke's really taking its time on its possession, working for the best shot. That's all they really need to do. They've got the talent. they got to make sure that the, every shot they take is the right one at the right time. And moving the ball, always having one extra player there in, in order to you know close it out. Nakai Montgomery making a beautiful down down uh, downfield move and goal line extended. Um, you know, that's that's the team that uh, scored 10 goals in the first half against Robert Morris. Nakai Montgomery, the latest goal scorer. He has three today. At just 15 all of last season. And Vermont with a deficit of three. They do have the advantage in the faceoff department, and they win yet another. So with this Duke team, Dave, you talk about a team that scores 21 goals on Friday, comes down the first half, puts up just two. Is that fatigue? Is that energy? Like, what is it that, that's so different about this Duke team the second half? You know, I, I, I think, well, number one is they weren't playing, playing with composure. Um, I know that they uh, that this Duke team does not underestimate any of its opponents, especially any top 20 teams. I just think that there are times when you – you know, try to execute your game plan and maybe something that the other team is doing throws you off a little bit. Um, and a hot goalie can do that. And that's certainly what we've seen this morning, seen today with uh, with Cornell. You know, right now the Duke is ahead, but um, they're, they're, the score is close because of, because of Cornell. Charlie O'Connor, 12 and white with the ball. 
you know, people around the, the Duke program think that O'Connor is kind of this hidden gem with all the talented players that the Blue Devils had. He feeds to the crease. Robertson and Cornell stood tall there. Robertson still with it. He goes low, and it's wide of Cornell. Dyson Williams, the only man back there for the Blue Devils. Yeah, to your point, that was just an insane feed down to Robertson. I don't know how he threads the needle on that. Uh, Robertson smartly, though, pulled it out, right? So that's what I'm talking about, getting that high opportunity, that high percentage shot. And now we've got possession, right? So ball's in our stick. Mitchell twirling, goes left and wide. Seven seconds remaining on the shot clock. Let's see how aggressively the Blue Devils attack. They try to go inside for Lully. And Vermont with possession prior to the shot clock expiring. Two hustling on the field in transition. Sean Lully just hacking away. McCormack there with three Duke players. Adler comes out of the crease. And Carpenter it bangs off of him. Vermont ball. What can the Catamounts do differently on this side of the ball? Uh, you know, the Catamounts right now have to have to sort of regroup a little bit um, and understand that, that uh, Duke was going to make a run, right? And, and that is that is a really big thing. Composure right now, they don't, they've really been playing great all game. So, you know, just, just understanding it. they got to do this for 60 minutes. And that was one of the key things that we mentioned in the very beginning of the broadcast. Clay Weiss is decked. And a loose ball push. It's Vermont ball. Clay Weiss, second line midfielder for Vermont. His father, Paul, played for Vermont in the late 80s. Maybe you went up against him, by the way. You know, I, I, I don't recall the name, but there was a lot of great uh, catamounts over time. I'm sure I'll meet up someday. <laughs> Maybe. Fennec, the line extended. Draws the slide. Hunter, he loses the ball. And Mike Adler scoops it up. Wilson Stevenson on the defense for the Blue Devils. Clean check. What we're seeing right now is you know, why are some of these checks working for the Blue Devils? Um, for the first time in the game, the Catamounts are, aren't moving their feet when they're dodging. And it's um, and you know that's making it so they're sort of a little bit little bit easier for them to apply some of the pressure that the Duke defense is rendering right now. Duke had two early turnovers in the clear game. They have not turned it over in that category since. A much cleaner play for John Donowski's club. Owen Caputo, all-time leading goal scorer in North Carolina high school history. He pots one for the Blue Devils and an 8-4 lead for Duke. Owen's coming down. It's a classic movie. He does this a lot. He takes the opportunity. He throws it, throws it right by the corner up, up in the shoulder of, of Cornell. And, you know, I don't even think Cornell saw that. You know, the, the, the sun could be a factor right now for Cornell and it's actually where he is on the field. And that's something you can't take lightly. It's a family background for Owen Caputo. Jake plays here, Father Ron, the defensive coordinator. And, you know, for a goalie there, right, isn't it more difficult for a guy like Ryan Cornell to stop the ball on the opposite side when it's near his ear as opposed to a little bit further out? Um, you know, it... It, 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 it depends. It, you know, that was a cross cage shot. So, you know, he's really looking at where the ball's coming off of the stick. And to the degree to which Caputo is able to sort of hide that and in his delivery, I mean, that's one of the things that, uh, right, that Brendan O'Neill is so uh, hard to defend because his shot comes from all, all the way down low and then comes over his body. And sometimes you can't even see where the ball is. So who does Vermont go to now? Six consecutive goals for Duke out of halftime. Liam Lamoge, he had the opening goal for the Catamounts. Duke looking for a stop right here. Lamoge with space and Adler with the perfect positioning on the stop against Lamoge. Duke's got to take care of this ball, make sure there's no turnovers, and get it down in the offensive zone. They've got plenty of time for a play. 15 seconds remaining third quarter. Brennan O'Neill on the charge. O'Neill hammers it down. It goes off the face mask of Cornell, who's out of the crease. Seven seconds to go. We've seen this before. 
And Vermont's not going to be able to get off a shot. But a flag is down as the quarter expires. So we will check on that when we come back for the fourth quarter. 6-0 blitz for Duke in the third. And a four-goal lead over the number 17 Vermont Catamounts. What is an overpass? Come on. Nobody wants more robot tests, but we could all use more ways to save. Uh... A motivated Blue Devils team in the third quarter, led by Nakai Montgomery, affecting all areas of the field. Yeah, Nakai's just a great, he's a Hoover on the ground balls. Um, amazing first step when you talk about his ability to dodge. You're going to see a couple examples of this coming up, but he's uh, he's the playmaker. It uh, doesn't matter where it in initiates from. He knows how to do it. His over his overhand shot is legendary. Comes in, can drill it usually on the ground, and then just an amazing first step. A sweep dodge here. No one's picking him up. He's going to put it high heat. And then coming down off the goal line, extended first step, just blows by people. He's the best first step in the NCAAs. So when you play running back in the fall, maybe you improve your speed a little bit. And that's what Montgomery did. He had three carries for 28 yards. So if you expand that a little bit more and give him some more uh, run plays, then Montgomery could expose that. Right before we went to break, Duke was flagged. It was Wilson Stevenson for a slash. So Vermont goes man up, trying to inch its way back into this one. What do the Catamounts look for here? Well, right now, I mean, you, you, you're you looking at a pretty big deficit in a low-scoring game. I mean, that's the, if this is a 15-13 kind of game, you know, that's one thing. But, you know, this game is low-scoring, so you got to really take advantage of this, making sure you fight for that great shot. McConvey, Klosterman back in front, intercepted by Duke's will, uh, rather Tyler Carpenter, and the Blue Devils will kill off this man up for Vermont. From a momentum perspective, that was actually a very big play for the Blue Devils, uh, because if you're looking at being going going into an eight-five game right off the bat, that gives Vermont a real real edge. So big stop right there um, again I don't know if that was a, a well-advised pass into the center which was pretty clogged Catamounts now 0 for 3 with the extra man today still within striking distance though down by four we haven't seen much from Andrew McAdory number two in white with the ball St. Anthony's product out on Long Island one of four key players for this Blue Devils team from St. Anthony's Akadori draws the slide. Denenza. Waiting for an opening. Vermont's defense clogs it up. And now Brennan O'Neill. Drawing the short stick. He isolates, he goes, and he shoots it wide to the left side of Cornell. Shot clock is down to eight. So that was a that was they were trying to get that matchup. They finally got it. It just wasn't able to get the right angle on the shot. Lully, he scores! he scores! Sean Lully puts it through Ryan Cornell. And Duke on a 7-0 run in the second half extends its lead to five. Yeah, this is just great next man up. I'll take it. Eight seconds left. You know, a lot of teams might not have known how to get composed with only eight seconds after O'Neal misses that shot. Lully, next man up, says, I'll take it. Sean Lully, the grad transfer from Penn, wearing that familiar number 23. It was worn by Michael Sowers last year. And John Donowski has said that this transition for Lully, it's been seamless. This complimentary attackman, he's suited for behind the cage. And he shows off his prowess there. Hey, 
you know, we talk about a guy like Michael Sowers last year, right? It was sometimes like you're trying to fit your glove or your hand into a, a glove. Your hand's a little sweaty. doesn't really work out that well. Sean Lully, though, comes in. He does not need the ball. That's what John Donowski told us. Yeah, I think he's he's going to find his role. And, you know, I think that, that look, the, the Donowski's teams are always evolving all the way even up until April. You know, so, at, you know, at the end of the day, Lully's going to be able to uh, to work as a productive player, has to find his role, and he's going to do it. Vermont needs an answer, and they need it quickly as McConvey is shoved off by Stevenson. Duke defense entirely different than they were in the first half. You see, they're organized. They're taking. They're in. They're they're holding their shape. Um, oh, what an overhead goal by McCormack! You kidding me with that stuff? McCormack looking for that matchup, looking for that key matchup behind. He draws a short stick, and that's exactly what we talked about. You know, they're going to attack you, but they're going to try to get the right matchup. Short stick, over the shoulder, hard shot to, for Adler to actually see um, coming at him. Chris Fives, the head coach of Vermont, wants McCormack to be more than just a one-trick pony. Has such a powerful shot from the outside. We saw it last year, but this year he wants to see McCormack create individually, shoot off the run. We saw it right there, and the Catamounts down by four. A long stretch for Vermont without a goal, their first since the second quarter. And now back-to-back -back possessions for the Catamounts. Can they start to get in a groove here? You know, when you're looking at, at, at right now that, you know, that level of swagger, a lot of it is when, you know, when do your key guys start to score again? You know, when you see that, it gets infectious. So um, the, the issue is they can't rush it. They have plenty of time. They just have to do fundamentally what they what they what their game plan was when they came in here. Lamoge draws the short stick against Jake Caputo. Now the slide comes. Duke settles back in. McCormack. McConvey makes his defender shake. He shoots, and Adler just gets a piece of it. Shot clock resets to 60. It's a great trail check by Duke on that play. Got a little bit of it. Gave, maybe gave Adler a little bit of time to get on the ball. Similar shot right there, low to high, off balance. And Limoges, slow to get up, gets some help from his teammate, J.J. Lewandowski. Limoges only at 5'9", 155, but Chris Fife's called him the toughest player on our team. McConvey finds the back of the net. Two consecutive here for the Catamounts. Vermont creeping closer. Yeah, it was a great dodge. He was able to really, really deceptively bring it inside, cross face, bring it back around, and then just, as he's diving, put it right off the shoulder of Adler. Pretty hard dodge to stop. Well, McConvey had the screen there. So what's the proper communication from a defensive perspective? Because McConvey decides there not to use the screen and goes to his right. Well, I think he's just looking at where, you know, he sees where, where the slide's coming from. And he's going to make that determination. And so, you know, it's all about his vision right there. Another key faceoff. Tommy Burke has certainly been dominating of late. But then Duke forces the turnover with Kenny Brower. Duke's got numbers. O'Neal to Kraus, and now Robertson puts it behind the net. Duke moves the ball quickly. O'Neal gyrating, spinning, and shoots it wide. Cornell may have gotten a piece of it. They're doing a good job keeping O'Neal about 13, 14 yards off the cage. And he's got his, his effectiveness is, is to be able to actually power his way in and get a lot closer to the goal for those shots. Charlie O'Connor against Stone Jacobs. O'Neal with a crevice of space, and he puts it home. Absolutely blazing shot. You know, if you're going to come out and play him, he'll dodge. If you're going to come out and play him, he'll dodge on you. 
And if you don't come out and play him, he'll take a straight up shot. That's just an absolute cannon. Well, Vermont has kept him in check. Eight shots for O'Neill. That's just his second goal. But those are the types of plays that really make you wow. Yeah, you, like 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 I said, you have two options with him. You come out and play him. He's two thirty seven at his, at his playing weight, and he's going to blow by it. Or if you hesitate you, and you stay back, he's going to just take that shot. So he's, he's almost impossible to play. Face off violation against Jake Naso and Duke. Brennan O'Neill, the youngest ever verbal commit in the history of the sport. He chose Penn State initially, back in eighth grade, but then decided that Duke was the best place to go, both from an academic and athletic standpoint. 45 goals his freshman year, and he puts the Blue Devils on top by four. Very quiet young man, Brennan O'Neill, just goes about his business. Says he doesn't really try it all that hard as Griffin Fennick puts it in. And Vermont just hanging around right now, now down by three. You know, it's a great job for Vermont, taking their time, getting that shot. Carpenter, slow to get out to cover him. He has the time, he has the space, he puts it right down on the ground, right through on the offside, low offside, just beautiful placement. Um, you know, that's what they have to do. They have, that's a high percentage shot for these guys. Another face-off win. Liam Limoges, Jack Frizzoli draws the assignment. Catamounts 0 and 14 all time against current ACC teams. 0 and 3 all time against Duke. Catamounts had a 4-2 lead at halftime. It's now a three-goal advantage for Duke. Klosterman, Haley can't fire off the shot. Kenny Brower tangles him up. Scrum of players, and Duke has it. Stevenson lofts it ahead to his fellow defender and Will Frizzoli. Transition opportunity for the Blue Devils. Kraus. Robertson spins, finds the space, and locates the corner. Joe Robertson off of transition play for the Blue Devils. Very reminiscent of what we saw Friday against Robert Morris. And a four-goal cushion for Duke. Yeah, this was a textbook transition play. Down to here, you see at the final part of it, Robertson does a nice spin move, comes in, finishes pay dirt. Started with the defense, so a great defensive stop. Here's Robertson again. Puts it on the ground. Really nothing Cornell can do about it. That's a classic four-on-three fast break. Uh, perfectly executed. Again, the goal started with the defensive stop, though. Joe Robertson, who combined for 90 goals in his first couple of years, tore his ACL in 2020. And now Duke again. It's Jake Naso, the face-off man. He gets the goal for Duke. Jake Naso pay, playing quick offense. Fogo, superstar. Jake Naso with three goals last season. And Naso on the board. He has been dominated all game long, but gets the goal for Duke. across this house with water dripping from the ceiling you never know when something like this will happen so let the geico insurance agency help you with homeowners insurance now if i had to guess i'd say somewhere upstairs there's a broken pipe bundle and save even more at geico.com duke tore apart vermont in the third quarter and the catamounts have found some of their offense but duke has stayed composed and a five-goal lead for the blue devils 
Yeah, you know, it's 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 actually you know, a tale of two halves, right? And um, when you really look at what's going on right now, you're if you're Vermont, you're looking up at the scoreboard and you're saying, we've scored seven goals in the entirety of the game. Can we score five or six to knot it up and go ahead in the remaining seven? So the clock can become the enemy right here. We saw this Blue Devils team with 10 goals in the first nine and a half minutes in the win over Robert Morris on Friday night. Just two goals in the first half. They've exploded for 10 in half number two. So at this juncture of the game, Dave, you have a five goal lead. Are you using some of that clock yet or are you still running your offense fluidly? Yeah, you're trying to probably take an extra every, every possession. You're taking an extra 10 second more than you would right now in order to in order to really sort of try to seal the deal um and you know you're not making any ridiculous you know plays you, you're trying to you're trying to you know play your game play the play do the things that ha you've you know been, been doing this half and really focus on that um and that's what the coaches are telling them right play loose um and make sure you know you make sure you're completing your plays Dyson Williams with the ball. He had four goals against the Colonials, and Dyson Williams has yet another for Duke. And yeah, Dyson Williams, I mean, it's it's amazing that he's on the same line with Brennan O'Neill because he is such an amazing threat. A Canadian who just can do it all from any part of the field, especially on the left side. You'll see right here, short stick matchup, comes around, brings it inside, and there's no slide. So, you know, this is this is again the dangers of having him and O'Neill on the same line. So, Dave, you've got four long poles out there, right? If you're defending Duke, who do you put those long poles on? And who do you give the short stick matchup to? I don't know. You know, it's, it's a really good question because, you know, every time I start to think that you become more attack focused, then you've got a guy like Monca Mon uh, Nakai Montgomery who, who they roll, they invert and they roll behind the goal. So that, 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 that tends to send a, a whole different kind of schematic in there. But it, it so many of these guys can invert that, it's really a hard question to answer. It's another face-off violation against Duke. Third of the half, so Vermont goes man up here. Down by six, Catapounce could desperately use a goal here to give themselves a chance down the stretch. Now, the last time they were in this position, it was a key moment, right, at the beginning of the, at the, beginning of the quarter, and they needed to capitalize. They forced it into the center. Let's see what they do now. Catamounts 0 for 3 with the extra man. Wilson Stevenson hounding there. Ball is loose. Duke possession. Quick turnover. Flag on the play. David Klosterman is down behind the play as Duke looks to hold on to the ball down in this side of the half and try to kill off the rest of the man up. They do so. So that, that possession was likely... Uh, check to the head on the goalie um klosterman thankfully is up and duke is going to be able to use this basically as a free play so when you talk about clock management right now mm -hmm. um you know you you might see the devils bring it all the way down without any much without much offensive uh you know in, in offensive uh drive until 15 seconds O'Neill against Canfield. Jackson Canfield in his first game since early last year after a partially torn ACL. That's the assignment he gets in game number one. Again, remember, it's a free play, so they're going to take a high percentage shot. That seems high percentage to me. That was high percentage. Upper shelf cheddar. Andrew McAdory, the prized freshman, number two overall recruit as the flag was down and McAdory puts it home. Yeah, this is just an absolute speed speed dodge. He came around, and if you watch his first step, it's somewhat like Montgomery's. He's going to be able to just absolutely come around, square his shoulders as he comes around the goal. He's already got a beat right there, comes around the goal, squares his shoulder, and goes high offside. There's no way to stop that. You know, there's a story that came out of the Chaminade St. Anthony's game, which is the top game out in Long Island. And St. Anthony's, who McAdory played for, they're up by one in the final possession. His head coach puts McAdory as a short stick D midi on Chaminade's best player in Charles Balsama, who, by the way, is coming to Duke next year. 
and McAdory just shuts down Balsamo, and St. Anthony's wins the game. That's the type of versatility that they're getting in Andrew McAdory this year. Yeah. Yeah, this guy is his Swiss Army knife, as a Coach described it to us during this week. Um, he, he literally can take face-offs with confidence. He can play defensive midfield. Um, he's on offense when he's needed on attack. Well, you just saw that from behind. Um, and, you know, he can do it all. And, again, he's an absolute beast in the weight room. Um, so, you know, low center of gravity. Um, he's got his, 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 his – from the waist down, he's got such power. Um, on, on and and he uses it. You can just see that first step. That's a result of that. Now you were a black belt, uh, still are, by the way. Thank were you, you a, a beast in the weight room or, or no? Uh, in the weight room, you know, I I I did, I did my share of uh, time in the, in the weight room. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it, but um, <laughs> I like I like martial arts a lot more. <laughs> I'll stay away from you then. Look at these top recruits for Duke. Five in the top 65. We haven't even talked about guys like a Jack Gray or a Keith Boyer. With all the experience that the Blue Devils return this season, it's tough to fit those guys in the lineup. It is. I, I, again, I think I, I said it. It's an it's an, a, an embarrassment of riches in terms of the offense uh, capabilities and and opportunities and options for these Blue Devils. They are um, they are going to be able to use this. And you know, one of the biggest things about it is if you make it to the final four for example you have a lot of these great players that get that postseason experience and they pass it on generation to generation to generation and that's what builds winning programs and that's why it was exciting to see uvm against maryland last year because those guys are back they know what it's like to play in the postseason they know what it's like to go up to against the maryland and you know punch them in the mouth and see what happens and both of these teams their seasons ended with losses against the Terps, Duke losing in the Final Four, Vermont losing in the first round of the NCAA tournament. And some could say that Vermont played a more competitive game than Duke did against the Terps. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, the, every one of those games is a unique individual event. So I, I can't say that, you know, one team playing against Maryland one way or the other because it's all matchup driven. But all I can say is that, you know, just to go out there, I'm, I look at UVM and when I spent the time this week looking at it they the, the game against syracuse then the game against vermont for me that put them on the map they are firmly in the top 20. well now they dug themselves in a bigger hole as the shot comes in front from cameron moulet ryan cornell makes the save duke is on the man up here there was a flag out prior to the goal duke has no oh. duke, i was about to say duke has no incentive to wait um, right now, so um, I think that, that that was right, very very opportunistic goal taken. Uh, they could have spent some more time off the clock. Brennan O'Neill, overhand, Howitzer. The individual creation that this guy has, he's on the outside. He's 15 yards out, and it just does not matter. Yeah, no, and and when you when you really look at him, he's this ball is hidden from the goalie's view most of his windup. And that's when, the, when they, you know, when people say, you know, how do how do you defend against him? I, 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 no one knows yet. Does he remind you of anyone? He reminds me of LeBron James. <laughs> I mean, he really does. You know, when you when when LeBron first broke in, it was the same kind of questions. Like, how how are we supposed to defend against this guy? Well, now he, he was touted as the next Zion Williamson, but that that's another step. Wow, I haven't yeah. heard that one yet. Well, you know, it's just in terms of his imposing figure. You know, he's he's he's. I, for me, if I'm not to go too deep into mythology, but he's he's Zeus, the power of Zeus, the body of Adonis, and the speed of Achilles. You know, so when you look at that, how, you know, how do you defend against that? Such a special talent. 45 goals last year, six in the opener. He has three today. One of three Blue Devils with a hat trick. As Griffin Fennick, another save by Mike Adler, and that's one of the underrated parts of this game right now. Mike Adler with 14 saves. This could be a very different game if Adler's not on top of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of the lacrosse sort of psychology on the field happens with your goalies. When your goalies are not playing great, you know, that you'll it, it, it tends to affect other parts of the field. But as a catalyst and as an adrenaline shot, a goalie's play can be so, so dramatically, um, you know, impactful on any game. And, and I think Adler probably wants a few shots back from the first half. But guess what? His second half has been off the hook. Well, he's been the true neutralizer in this game because Vermont has won 17 out of the 25 faceoffs in this game. As O'Connor is decked, flag comes out and Duke to the man up once Vermont gets possession. Yeah, I think right now it's just getting, it's getting a little bit chippy. Um, 
And, you know, this is what happens in the, in the final minutes of a, of, a, of a close game. You know, Vermont's been holding in. You know, we said at the very beginning of the game, can you do it for 60 seconds across all 110 yards of this field? You know, and so for 60 minutes, I mean. Um, can you do it for 60 minutes across 110 yards of the field? And that's the key thing. So Vermont now man down for a full minute. Tim Manning goes off. And Duke just add insult to injury. Again, this was a 4-2 game at halftime. Vermont with all the confidence. Duke looked rattled after scoring 21 goals in the opener. But the Blue Devils stomped their foot down and really asserted themselves in the final 30 minutes of this game. Yeah, and if you look at it, you know, something we noticed the other day, back to, you know, how much talent there is on the Duke offense, Dyson Williams isn't on man up, hmm. right? So that, that's, that tells you something. If Dyson Williams isn't on man up, now he could be in different rotations at different games. They do switch it up, but that's just you know, one more proof point what we're talking about. Right, Dyson Williams led freshman nationally a couple of years ago in goals per game. Nick Alvidi in transition for Vermont, trying to get something going for the Catamounts as we approach the two-minute mark in the final quarter. So substitutions in. If I was Vermont, I'd actually be playing a little bit more hot right now. They, they, they don't have the luxury of time. Thomas McConvey with the ball. He has just one goal today, the leading goal scorer from last year with 37 as Chris Fifes wants to draw something up. Less than two minutes to go. Duke has turned around a two-goal deficit into an eight-goal lead. You know, for this Vermont program, winning the America East last year, going to the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history, from what you've seen today, what does Vermont need to do to take that next step, to be in the conversation for an NCAA quarterfinal appearance, let's say? I, you know, it's a long road. I mean, I think they, ha they have to win the games they are expected to win. Uh, to be honest with you, coming in here and, uh, and having a score, if this is the final score, say 15 to, to 7, I don't th actually think that will impact their rankings at all. In fact, they could improve depending on who wins and loses this week. So, you know, coming in here and, you know, doing a very good job holding Duke at 4-4-2 four to four to two at the half, you know, that's something that I, you know, I think that they should be very proud of and build on. There isn't, I don't think you leave this game and say, what do we do wrong? I mean, these guys barely made it here last night on their plane, right? right? So I say, you know, to the to hats off to the Catamounts. Um, and I'm, I'm looking for them to be, you know, a top 10 contender in the, in the years ahead. And, you know, could be quicker than that. You know, but so that, that's the thing. And you know, also, the people who are watching this game, they're being recruited by Vermont. You know, they want to play on a team that goes up against a Duke and has a really competitive game, right? So this is a great game for recruiting. And the, so was the Syracuse game last year and also against uh, Maryland. You were only down by three against the Terps last year at halftime. You see the 17-11 scoreline. You say, okay, they weren't really close. That's not the case. And well, you're going to see the scoreline today and say that's not the case either. But again, the Vermont two-goal lead at halftime. Well, what does that say, though? That says that a lot of, they can hold their own with, with really great teams for a half. So to answer your question, you want to step up into the top ten and be there permanently, you got to play 60 minutes. Right, and Chris Weiss was saying that, look, we've got the, the top-line athletes to compete with Duke. We just don't have the depth that the Blue Devils have. Duke can wear down teams, and um, that's why a lot of their scoring happens in the third quarter. Griffin Fennick, goal line extended, shoved off. Double team, and Duke wins the ball. That is Jake Wilson, the freshman defender, coming up with it. As the Blue Devils substitute some guys on here final minute of play from Koskinen Stadium and Dukes looks poised for a 2-0 start to the 2022 season Blue Devils have been to championship weekend in three consecutive years three national championships but none since 2014 yeah the Devils have a, they have you know they have a formula you know and they work the formula every year and it's not about every single game, individual game. It's about a series of games over a course of months that get them ready for postseason play. Um, and and that is a you know that's 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 something that it's a program you know that and a, and and a designed program. And I think that 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 philosophy imbues throughout the entire season. 
Vermont pushing forward with 10 seconds to go, trying to make this one a closer game. As Duke's defense has really put the clamps down on Vermont in the second half. Here is Michael McCormack shooting. Mike Adler makes one final save. That's his 15th of the day. And Duke, after trailing by two at halftime, storms away with a 15-7 win over the Vermont Catamounts. Yeah, congratulations to the Catamounts. A great effort. They came down here. They showed them that they're ready to play. They're a legit top 20 team. And the Blue Devils are off to their next, you know, matches in non-conference and ACC play. And uh, it was a great game. 21 goals for Duke in the opening game against Robert Morris on Friday. Another 15 today, 13 of which in the second half. This is going to be a problem for ACC teams and those around the country all season long as the number three Blue, Duke Blue Devils move to 2-0 and on the season. Vermont drops the season opener for them. For our producer, Katie Bessel, and our entire crew, Corey Spector signing off. Duke wins 15-7 over Vermont. Thank <laughs> you.